This is a plunger for a bomb I put in the lobby. <laughs> You know what? Banaka, that's breast spray. No, I, no, it's nicotine. It's straight nicotine. Oh, really? Yeah. The, the, no delivery by, device, just straight nicotine. And Are you in, into nicotine? Yeah, I've been you into it. Want to try a little? I don't. Let me see. I'll yeah. hold it for a second because I, um, yeah, I was doing nicotine for a long time, and then I've had 14 days off, and I'm on the. Oh, oh well, then give me that. Back. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> now I've had one day off. Oh, then take it. Well, just give, let's leave <laughs> yeah, it right here. Okay. Well, it's, it's TBD. <laughs> yeah. This is just there. But one of uh, my, another comedian on the tour bus had um, a vape on him. Oh. And I had a moment at night. It was just like, I was falling apart. I don't know. It was just, because sometimes if I'm up too late, then I'll do something to damage myself. Like, of course. I'll like do a, watch a, uh, do, cue up some porno. Uh -huh. Or. Do you have a preferred website? Mm. You do, but you don't want to promote it? Uh, I, mean, I just don't know. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it's yeah, not an important I question. I mean, a lot of the websites I just, are... I'm not, I don't do a lot of porn, but I'm, yeah. I'm increasingly wanting to. No. And and um, I'm wondering if I'm on the right website. Because yeah. <laughs> well, I, think... I think you strike me as a pro, and I don't say that judgmentally, <laughs> but it, I feel like you've been to every corner of the internet. I've been through some... Yeah, I've been through some probably... I don't want to call them wormholes, but sure, yeah, I've been sure. through some... I've, yeah. So I've, I want you to Jedi me just a tiny bit and be like, save some time. This is where you want to be. What happens to me? So I'd be up late and I'll be kind of fucking antsy or whatever. And I'll probably have been doing some vaping. And so then I'm like, all right, well, might as well watch a little bit of porno. Pornography. You know, yeah. Just to fucking cap the night off. <laughs> yeah. I'm a fucking king. Bookend it. Yeah. Because uh -huh. I do what I want to do. Yeah. So next thing you know, I'm, I get queued up on there. And I have this fear now that the... They, the porno sites, are videoing you back. Oh. That's how they get people like down the line is like, they're like, oh, blackmail. Yes, for blackmail. Mm. So it's like, do you have tape over your camera or anything? That would be smart. Oh my God. Yo. Here's what I'm <laughs> doing, dude. No, no, I do something crazy. <laughs> what do you do? I put the screen at like an angle where it can only kind of see the ceiling or whatever. And then I kind of like, oh my lord! I'll like lean off and kind of <laughs> masturbate at like an angle, kind of. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sideways. <laughs> like I'm the guy that does those. Uh, <laughs> remember that picture they used to have on the on the school on the wall of the staircases that interchanged or whatever. The Escher, MC Escher. Yes, MC Escher. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'll yeah. take like a real MC Escher <laughs> angle. Sure. Penis is off to your right hip. <laughs> yeah, just making sure I'm out of the way. <laughs> Okay, but let's drill down into because I think I know exactly what you. Dax it Shepherd. started with it nice started with you. you're too late. I, my addiction was only curbed by m my me being broke. Right, because like you're I, in recovery, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah. that's a th I think I found, I think that's what actually like turbocharged me reaching out to you. Yeah, it's like I just liked you, and then I was talking to a friend of mine, Charlie, about you, and he's like, "Oh, I love him." Yeah, I listened to his podcast. He goes, "You know, he's he's like sober. I think he's like eighteen months sober," and I was like. Oh, wow. Now I really have a reason I could reach out. That's cool, man. But yeah, I quit. Well, it was nice of you. I'm glad that you did. Yeah. Yeah. We've already had a couple of really nice text exchanges. Yeah, we have, man. We had a nice one the other day. And um, yeah, it's been fun, man. Um, yeah, I like meeting people that are in recovery. I feel a lot easier around people that are in recovery for mm -hmm. some reason. And I don't know even what it is if there's a different, an immediate like level of like care or connection. What do you think about it? I think it's what's weird is looking back on my life, it parallels exactly who I also hung out with as a kid, which is I only hung out with kids on welfare who yeah. also had divorced parents who also probably had violence in the household. I like being around people that I don't think are going to judge me. Mm. And in the program, everyone there is a fucking scumbag. Yeah. Everyone's a piece of shit. That's why we're there. And like the great, like experience you have if you go to AA and you work the steps is you're like you've made this list of things you've done wrong and you, you're 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 required to tell somebody and generally it's your sponsor or whatever yeah and you're certain when you walk in there and you let them have this list of things you regret that they're gonna call the police on you or throw up in disgust <laughs> with you and they look at you they're almost laughing <laughs> like oh that's yeah, it yeah. 
Well, you didn't fuck any animals. That's yeah. like, I'm impressed you haven't fucked any animals. And then you're yeah. like, well, read the back of that second page. <laughs> yeah, oh shit, you're right. Um, yeah, fuck, yeah. I left something out. <laughs> yeah, dude. But that look of like, yeah, me too, yeah. is the most comforting thing for me. Yeah, there'll be times when I'm in a meeting and like you're sitting there and somebody says something and you can feel, this is crazy. It's... It's almost like how volleyball teams all get their period at the same time. Or whatever. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. You can feel like everybody in the room at the same time. Like, <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. You ever had that happen? Oh, yeah, for sure. And you're like, it's almost like a group of fish or something. Like, yeah, some of the steam all change direction. Yeah, yeah. Some of the steam leaves at the same time out of every. It's it's got it's it's got to be some physiological thing, but it's unbelievable. Yeah. So we, we we will match our breathing when we're connected. Uh -huh. Our heart rates will match. All this crazy shit. That's true. We'll start mirroring. Yeah, this is like scientifically proven wow. time and time again. So yes, that moment in a meeting, it's like it's chaotic. Someone fought over a parking spot. Another guy just got broken up with. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. This person like sledgehammers through. Generally, for me, when I've experienced it, like with some moment of vulnerability, like I just failed at this fucking thing. And yeah. we all go like, wait, oh, God, I know exactly what it feels like to fail in that specific way. Yeah. And now all of us have joined like the same brain pattern. So I think it's not like it's not imagined. I think it's physiologically observable. Huh. And it's so powerful. Yeah. It's when you realize like. Oh yeah, we're social monkeys and we're supposed to be in a group like this and we're supposed to be dialed in and it feels fucking right. What was your um preferred substance? Cocaine? Yeah. Oh yeah. What a drug. I just had Bateman on last week. Jason oh, Bateman. I love him. He's he, fascinating he's a, to look at. He has one of those faces you can tell why he's an actor because it's just the most everything about it is so engaging and interesting. Yes. Yes, yes. You could just stare at it. Yeah, it's interesting when he's you're just like he just yeah. Do but, some um, thinking for me, Bateman. I'll watch. Yeah. Take your time, too. Yeah, yeah. But he was a Hoover, admittedly. Uh loved He's the a cocaine. party, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so we Good were talking, him. and I said, Do you ever, do you ever? I said, I'm not gonna do this, but I was directing chips and I was talking to an actor on the uh movie, and she said that she and her boyfriend had gone and stayed at Cocaine Hotel in, in uh Columbia. Mm. I was like, Cocaine Hotel, what's Cocaine Hotel? And she's like, It's a it's co do you know about the Cocaine mm -mm. Hotel? It's everywhere. It's on the tables everywhere you go, in the rooms, wow. uh, at the thing. It's a it's a hotel to do cocaine. And I said, do you ever, Bateman, do you ever think about just spending a few days down at cocaine? He's like, well, I don't know. I mean, there's so much shit in coke now. And I said, no, no, I think this is farm-to-table coke. I think the guys are stomping on it in the backyard <laughs> and they're bringing it in in a dustpan yeah. and then dropping it off. I think this is as medicinal and pure as it is. Well, that's is. what we need in this country. Dude, make coke great again. Farm-to-table. We need farm-to-table cocaine. We do. You got your vegetables. We did that. You got your farm-to-table vegetables. Now let's... It's sad that a kid can't get some decent <laughs> cocaine in this country. It really is. Yeah, you knew you were going to be huffing some some baby laxative and some acetylene or whatever. You you knew that, but... But now it's different. Well, that's when you connect the dots that like, oh, because I connected these dots in sobriety, which is like, oh, this is the exact same thing. Like, whether I want to acknowledge it or not, this sex thing and this approval thing is identical to cocaine. Yeah. Um, I had like the most visceral experience of my life that pointed that out to me. Well, I had two. Um, one was, and I was a few years sober and I was single mm -hmm. and I was on MySpace. Mm, yeah. And I was on TV. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Just take that in for a second. So you were just damn Prince Charles or whatever. <laughs> I was enjoying the shit out of MySpace. And also I had not. I hadn't looked at the sex component as potentially harmful to me yet. Yeah. But I remember a gal came over. And you were good at sex, you said? I mean, what could be more nauseating than a guy saying they're good at yeah, sex that's out true. loud? So that's just a lose-lose for me. We'll just pretend that you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you, yeah. I, I certainly some people aren't good. Some people, you know. Th also, yeah. let's be honest. The more you fuck, the the better you are. Like, you're not oh, coming no. as fast. You're <laughs> like, <laughs> right? that, dude. Sure, you've had periods where you fucked seven days in a row. And no. 
I never. I was always too lazy to do something like that. I think. Oh really? Yeah. You were saved by your lethar- if, lethargy. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I had sex twice in a week or in t- yeah, I was always very like. It was like it took a while. Yeah, just like yeah. Well, okay. So I need to preface this by I'm ashamed of this. What I'm about to tell you, like I am ashamed of this, <laughs> but this is very true. I was a few years sober. Uh-huh. I was single. Someone had come over that I had met on MySpace, mm-hmm. and I was giving them a tour of the house, and I was in the first room of the tour, and I had this thought that was like, oh, this tour is so long. You had a big house? No. I didn't have a big house. Oh. There was, and I was <laughs> like, but then I thought, what is this? I have a very familiar feeling. Like it's 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 unmissable. Mm. This feeling I have right now, mm-hmm. and I like took a second to try to figure out like what I know this feeling. I know this feeling. What is this? What is this? And I was like, oh my god, I know exactly what this is. This is sitting in my old drug dealer Tom's living room while he measured out shit and told me about his fucking day and got distracted by telling me about his day. And I wanted to scream, just like, fucking give me a bump and I'll listen to you forever, but fucking focus and give me the thing. Like that that impatience. Oh, yes. Teamwork. You want teamwork. Yes. Just like, knock off the bullshit. Give me the thing. (laughs) And then let's talk. Fucking be all ears for eternity. Yeah. But that feeling was, is so specific to me that in that moment in the room, I realized, oh, my God, it's the same thing. I'm like, I need this woman to give me the thing I need. And I hate that. I hate that about myself. I hate that for her. I hate all of it. It's just I don't want to be insatiably needing something from somebody and dependent on them giving me the thing. And I was like. Whoa. So that was one moment where I was like, oh, God, they're kind of the same thing. Right. And once I recognize that, I'm like, I probably have to think about it in those terms. Like, do I feel worse about myself or people, you know, are they benefiting from, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Then the other crazy thing that happened that really sealed it for me was I was monogamous. It was for the first time in like a decade. And so, and then I was talking to my then girlfriend who was in Boston doing something. And she told this story about bumping into somebody I knew she cheated on her ex-boyfriend with. And they're all at the same hotel. And I'm thinking like, well, I'm sure they fucked, right? So I'm like, I'm mad driving. I'm driving in, a, in the car on the 405. And I had been monogamous at that point for like three months. We get in a kind of fight over that. And we hang up. And I just had this like swell like a swell of horniness Mm -hmm. the way you do when it's like i gotta get coke or i got whatever that really big swell and all of a sudden i was so horny and i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna text kelly i'm gonna text kelly right now and um i can stop by her i'm not supposed to because i'm now monogamous blah blah and then i just had a moment where i was like that's interesting you're you're in a fight You feel emasculated by whatever just happened and your body's smart enough to go, well, let's get horny. You won't have to feel any of this if you're horny and we're at Kelly's house and you're getting validated and you come. All this stuff. I was like, fuck, this is like a defense yeah. because it's just like any other thing. I'm so afraid of my feelings or feeling uncomfortable. That your body created some defense. My body was ahead of me. It's yeah. like I hung up. I didn't even register what had just happened. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I am physically horny. It's Damn. not like I made it up. Yeah. And those two things for me, I was like, yeah, this is a <laughs> this is a whole thing we got to figure out. Yeah. Wow. Man, yeah, that's the cra- that's the craziest part is that a lot of times it's not even you making a choice. It could be you choosing once you get the input, but your like physiologicalness is making the it's dealing you the cards, and you're like, and again, Holy back to the shit. brain, the area of your brain that's now sucking up all the blood and running the show isn't the part of your brain, your neocortex, where you would think through all the things that are going to happen after this. Yeah, it's like you're not even. You're, these two areas can't be doing the thinking at the same time. So once that swell of like craving comes about, this is offline. 
Yeah. You're like, I don't, I'm never going to see you tomorrow. Or that's tomorrow Dax's problem. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> I yeah. feel bad for him, but today's Dax is about to get fucked up and feel good. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's like it, everything, the ability to have any comprehension really or any forward thinking completely disappears. That's crazy, bro. I mean, it disappears. Yeah, it's gone. It's you can't unbelievable. access it. 